Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Bluster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, many of the nation's high school football teams played in postseason junior bowl games last week. Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, also received a bowl bid. Yes, Madison was invited to play in the cereal bowl. <laughs> the game was scheduled for last Saturday, and Friday morning at breakfast, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, asked me about the details. Where has the team been invited to play, Connie? In the stadium at Clay City, Mrs. Davis. And you ought to see how big our beloved principal is taking this invitation. Mr. Conklin's so puffed up, he looks like he was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> if you'll pardon a little wishful thinking <laughs> The last few days he's been absolutely memo happy Memo happy? He sends out one inter-office communication after another But the game tomorrow should be a lot of fun Walter Denton, the team's manager, told me that the cheerleaders and the team and the band are all going down in buses Then there's going to be a dance at the Clay City Hotel after the game I'd give anything to go then why don't you, Connie? I haven't got anything. <laughs> the tickets are pretty expensive, Mrs. Davis, and on my budget, well, it's just out of the question. How about Mr. Boynton? Is he going? Yes, he's got a ticket already, I believe. Just one ticket? Mr. Boynton's on a budget, too. <laughs> but there's still a chance for me to go along as a chaperone for the girl cheerleaders. Mr. Conklin's daughter, Harriet, told me that he's going to choose between Miss Enright and me today. Miss Enright? But she's always making goo-goo eyes at Mr. Boynton. If she goes to Clay City for the game and the dance afterwards, she'll have him all to herself. I thought of that, Mrs. Davis. That's why I'm giving Mr. Conklin his Christmas present a little early this year. <laughs> <laughs> like in a half an hour. <laughs> Good. What are you giving Mr. Conklin? A pair of nice woolen socks to keep his feet warm at the game. Oh, it isn't that I want to influence Mr. Conklin to select me instead of Miss Enright. It isn't. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, all's fair in love and war, Connie. Remember, Miss Enright will take any unfair advantage of you that she can. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Davis. You wouldn't? Of course I would. <laughs> and she would. At least she always has. Taken advantage, I mean. Would you answer the door, please, Connie? I'll take the breakfast dishes into the kitchen. All right, Mrs. Davis. It's probably Walter Denton. He's giving me a lift to school. Coming! Good morning, Miss Brooks. Miss Enright. I was just driving to school, and knowing the usual condition of your car, I thought I might give you a ride this morning. Well, that's very considerate, Miss Enright, but Walter Denton's picking me up any minute. Oh. Well, there's another reason I stopped by... If I may come in out of the draft for a moment, I'll explain. Oh, I'm sorry. Come in, Miss Enright. Sit down, won't you? Oh, I'd rather stand, I think. I've a new dress on, and the furniture doesn't look too dusted. <laughs> Better brush off your finger. We haven't vacuumed the doorbell in months. <laughs> You're so witty, darling. <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you that in spite of our little differences in the past, I see no reason why we can't be more friendly in the new year, which is practically upon us. Well, I'm sure that As I As a matter don't... of fact, I've brought a little peace offering with me, Miss Brooks. Here, I'd like you to have this ticket. Ticket? To what, Miss Enright? To the fireman's ball. My Aunt Jessie bought it weeks ago, but the poor darling just doesn't feel up to going this year. And rather than waste the ticket, we immediately thought of you. Auntie says it's a lot of fun for spinsters. <laughs> what time will you be there? <laughs> Look, Miss Enright, I don't believe that an unmarried girl should consider herself a spinster until she reaches a certain age. Well, don't be testy, darling. I'm sure you won't reach that age for months yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, take the ticket and have a good time tomorrow night. Oh, it's for tomorrow night. Now, that's a coincidence. The bowl dance is being held tomorrow night in Clay City, and one of us is supposed to chaperone that affair. Oh, but I'm virtually assured of that position, Miss Brooks. What makes you think so? Oh, I could tell from dear Mr. Conklin's reaction to my visit yesterday. You see, I dropped into his office after school with a little gift for him. 
I uh, always like to give out my Christmas presents early. What potential chaperone doesn't? <laughs> what did you give, Mr. Conklin? I gave him a lovely pair of woolen socks. Woolen socks? Yes, he was very appreciative. Seemed genuinely touched. But that's what I like about our principal anyway. He has such a warm heart. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? I don't know about his heart, but he's going to have the warmest feet in Clay City. <laughs> I've got to have a few words with Mr. Conklin before my first class, Walter. Do you think we'll arrive at school in time? I'll get you there in time to talk his arm off, Miss Brooks. <laughs> but, but you shouldn't worry about that job as chaperone. There's absolutely no doubt that you'll be chosen. Well, according to Harriet, it's still between Miss Enright and me. But, Miss Brooks, anybody who could possibly pick Miss Enright over you for any kind of position should have Mr. Conklin's head examined. <laughs> I mean, well, it's a foregone conclusion that he'll take you And the dance ought to be a lot of fun tomorrow night Harriet and I have promised each other every dance Except maybe one or two she'll have to give Mr. Boynton Oh, then Mr. Boynton is definitely going I thought you knew Yeah, he got his ticket Monday right after we were chosen to play in the bowl He's followed the team through thick and thin, Miss Brooks That's why you've just got to go tomorrow Well, how can I, Walter? Unless I'm chosen chaperone Well, easy you can still buy a ticket. It's not that easy. There's only a limited supply, you know. Of tickets? Of money. <laughs> and tickets. They're probably all sold out by now. Oh, don't worry, Miss Brooks. We'll figure something out. Uh, but to get back to Mr. Conklin for a second. Since we've been chosen to play in the bowl, he's definitely lid-flipping material. Lid-flipping material? <laughs> he's blowing his entire cork, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Every time I turn around, I get another memo. Oh, uh, look at this last communique he sent me yesterday afternoon. Let's see it, Walter. Hmm. From the office of the principal to the manager, such as he is, of the football team. <laughs> as per my prior instructions, have you made sure the members of the school band are bringing their instruments? <laughs> How does he think they're gonna play on? Tissue paper and combs? <laughs> Not that it wouldn't be an improvement. <laughs> Mr. Conklin is a man of many memos these days. He sure is, Miss Brooks. But there isn't much we can do about it. After all, a school principal is a school principal. I guess you're right, Walter. But under another set of circumstances, Mr. Conklin and I might get along beautifully. What kind of circumstances, Miss Brooks? If he were the principal of Madison High and I was an English teacher in Budapest. <laughs> Come in. Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. What can I do for you? Do you really want to know, Mr. Conklin? No, it was just a figure of speech. <laughs> Please be brief. I've got a lot on my mind. Yes, sir. I'd like you to accept this little Christmas present, Mr. Conklin. I wanted you to have it early. Thank you, Miss Brooks. What is it? Well, it's a sort of surprise, a timely surprise. As a man who suffers from hypertension, Miss Brooks, I find that surprises do very little for me. What's in the package? Well, I'll give you a hint, Mr. Conklin. You received a present from another teacher yesterday, isn't that right? Yes. Well, if you had that present on and then put my present on, you'd be wearing a very bloated pair of shoes. <laughs> Here, I'll just put it away in your closet. Oh, while I'm at it, I could clean out this closet for you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, no, thank you, Miss Brooks. Miss Enright did that for me yesterday. <laughs> As you know, I'm going to choose one of you as the chaperone for the trip tomorrow. I'll make my final decision at lunchtime. Very good, Mr. Conklin. Have you completed all arrangements for tomorrow? Uh, practically. I've just finished another memo for those directly concerned with the trip. I call it Schedule A. Would you like to hear it? Not it reads at 7.30 a.m. <laughs> Band members and cheerleaders under supervision of female chaperone will leave on bus number one. Second half of contingent will be personally conducted by me and will leave at 8 o'clock on bus number 2, signed Osgood Conklin. That certainly is explicit. I must say, Mr. Conklin, these memos of yours are a wonderful idea. Why, this schedule lists all the instructions so clearly and concisely that there couldn't possibly be the slightest confusion. I'm quite slippery on this side, Miss Brooks. Perhaps you should start buttering up the other. <laughs> 
I, Mr. Conklin, it's just that I realize that there's more to this expedition than the honor of being invited to a bowl football game. And I want you to know that I'm ready, willing, and able to accept the great responsibility, the hard work, and the free ticket that goes with it. <laughs> Our Miss Crooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. <laughs> Well, when lunch period started, I made my last bid for Mr. Conklin's favor. I went to the school cafeteria and filled a tray with the best food available, then carried it down to his office so he could have his lunch in private. The door was ajar, so I walked right in. Surprise! Ah! <laughs> you, Miss Brooks. Come in. Yes, do come in, darling. Miss Enright, what are you doing here? Uh, Miss Enright was thoughtful enough to bring me some food from the cafeteria so I could have my lunch in private. <laughs> Wasn't that sweet of her? Sweet and swift. <laughs> uh, what's that you have on the tray, Miss Brooks? This? Mm. Oh, I just thought you might like a little dessert, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> uh, what sort of dessert? Roast loin of pork. <laughs> Terribly middle class. Well, it looks delicious, but I've just finished a Swiss steak that Miss Enright brought me. I've got to watch my weight. Oh, then I'll just take uh, it back. Put it down the... on my desk. I have a long day ahead of me. <laughs> now then, you're both wondering, no doubt, as to which of you is my final choice for the position of chaperone at the Clay City Game and Dance. Well, there's no hurry about it, Mr. Conklin. If you want to. Who? Who? <laughs> well, it's not you, Miss Brooks. Then you mean. No. No, it's not you either, Miss Enright. I've decided that the ideal chaperone for this trip is Mrs. Conklin. Mrs. Conklin? Your wife? An amazing deduction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the thought occurred to me this morning while I was mulling over a memo that the chaperone for girls should be a married woman. That eliminated Miss Enright, of course. And unless there's been a sudden and radical upheaval in your existence, you're not married either, Miss Brooks. You're so right, Mr. Conklin. But if you'll excuse me now, I've got something very important to do in the cafeteria. Uh, what's that, Miss Brooks? I've got to start engineering a sudden and radical upheaval in my existence. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, well, this is a coincidence. Uh, what is, Miss Brooks? My running into you like this, after only five minutes of stalking. <laughs> but, Mr. Boynton, I wanted to talk to you about the weekend. Have you any plans? Plans? Well, certainly, Miss Brooks. I've got a ticket to the cereal ball game at Clay City. But that's 80 miles away, Mr. Boynton, and I understand the trip is being made in buses, those drafty, old-fashioned buses. Oh, they're not so bad, and the game should be a lot of fun. Fun? Bucking those crowds? Then when you do get in, you have to sit on hard wooden benches with your feet on cold cement. And do you know what a breeding place for germs a mob of people can be? But, oh, Miss Brooks, people go to football games all the time, never catch anything. Some people stay home and never catch anything. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, this game is for kids. But there's a dance afterwards for everybody. Fine dance. 
You know who's going to play the music for it? Our school orchestra. And have you heard them rehearsing lately? Well, no, I, I haven't. I have. They were running through Mule Train the other day. And <laughs> the only instruments on key were the whips. <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised at this attitude of yours, Miss Brooks. I thought you'd be keen to go. Didn't you even buy a ticket? Buy a ticket? I wouldn't go to that clam bake if somebody gave me a ticket. Besides, there's a new movie coming to the Strand tomorrow that all the papers say may get the Academy Award. It's called All the King's Men. You wouldn't want to miss that, would you? Well, I'll see that later on, Miss Brooks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to my laboratory before class starts. Some things I want to pack away for the weekend. Go ahead, Mr. Boynton. Well, I... I'll see you before I go, won't I? There's no hard feelings. Oh, certainly not. No reason why you shouldn't go where you want to go when you want to go there. <laughs> Is there? Uh, I, I guess not. See you later, Miss Brooks. Uh, 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 toodle. <laughs> But instead, I'll trust him implicitly. He can go where he wants to go, do what he wants to do. I don't care. <laughs> my affection. Excuse me, Miss Brooks, but I've got the most wonderful news for you. May I sit down for a minute? Why, certainly, Harriet. What's the news? Daddy just talked to Mother on the phone, and she doesn't feel up to going along tomorrow. So he picked you to chaperone the girl. Me? What made him decide on me? Well, to be perfectly honest about it, Miss Brooks, Daddy flipped a coin. He says if it was heads, you'd go, and tails, Miss Enright would go. And the coin came up heads? Three times. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's your ticket, Miss Brooks. This is good not only for the game, but a round-trip ride on the bus and admission to the dance. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Oh, this is a real break, Miss Brooks. You got just utterly the last ticket in school. Oh, one more thing. Here's another memo from Daddy. He wants you to read it very carefully. Let's see. Schedule B. At 7.30 a.m., band members and cheerleaders under supervision of female chaperone. Yeah, I know, Harriet. I, I, in fact, I knew Schedule B when it was only Schedule A. <laughs> if you, if, pardon me, Harriet. I've got to tell someone about the news you just brought me. Who, Miss Brooks? Oh, someone. All right, Miss Brooks. And I know Mr. Boynton will be tickled to hear it. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. After you left, Mr. Boynton, I got to thinking about our conversation. Uh, me too, Miss Brooks, and I've decided that I I'm not going on the Clay City trip after all. <laughs> You're not going? No, no, I'm selling my ticket to Mr. LeBlanc, the French teacher. Selling your ticket? But, Mr. Boynton, you're missing the trip of the century. <laughs> Cozy modern buses, the thrill of personal contact with that adorable horde of people at the stadium. And then there's the game itself. Tense, exciting action, viewed from comfy, form-fitting beaver board seats. <laughs> just, just a minute, Miss Brooks. Are you going tomorrow? Of course I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> But you said in the cafeteria that you wouldn't go if somebody gave you a ticket. What made you change your mind? Somebody gave me a ticket. <laughs> uh, Miss Brooks, what about all the king's men? All the king's men couldn't drag me away from Clay City tomorrow, <laughs> Mr. Boynton. And I'm surprised that you don't feel the same way. Well, I, I would like to root for the old team, but I promised Mr. LeBlanc the ticket, and once I make a promise, I keep it. Well, don't worry about me, Miss Brooks. I'll find something to do. I'll probably take Miss Enright to a movie or something. Miss Enright? Well, yes, yeah, she loves movies, you know. She loves sitting in movies. There's a difference. <laughs> Honestly, Mr. Boynton, I just can't understand you sometimes. Well, how do you mean, Miss Brooks? Well, doesn't being with the old team mean more to you than being with old Enright? <laughs> If there's anything wrong with Miss Enright that a little chicanery, which I'm about to indulge in, couldn't eliminate, along with Miss Enright. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I don't follow you, Miss Brooks. Let's keep it that way, Mr. Boynton, at least temporarily. I'll see you in a little while. Yeah, but, Miss Brooks, you don't... Toodle! <laughs> Hiya, Miss Brooks. I've been looking all over for you. And Mr. Conklin wants you to read this memo right away. Oh, let's see that, Walter. 
Schedule C. At 7.30 a.m., band members and cheerleaders will board bus number one. Oh, great. I don't have to read this. I know this schedule backwards. Well, you don't sound very enthusiastic about being chosen chaperone, Miss Brooks. Frankly, Walter, I'm not. But why not? Well, it's a long, dull story in which the heroine cuts her own throat. But boiled down, it reads, Mr. Boynton isn't going. Now I'm stuck with a ticket for a trip I don't even want to make. Hello, Miss Brooks. Walter? Oh, it's you. Hi, Miss Enright. If you ladies will excuse me, I've got to get over to the supply room and pick up some megaphones. Uh, we can finish our conversation in a few minutes, Miss Brooks. Thanks a million, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Compton told me that you won the toss, Miss Brooks, and I suppose good sportsmanship demands that I offer my congratulations. Well, thank you, Miss Enright. That is very sporting of you. Of course, I have enough money in the bank to go on my own, but there just isn't a ticket to be had. I know there isn't a... Wait a minute. What would a ticket be worth to you, Miss Enright? Why? Do you have an extra one, Miss Brooks? Would you give $5 for a ticket, Miss Enright? It includes bus fare and admission to the dance, you know. Well, that sounds eminently fair, Miss Brooks. Here's the $5. And here's the ticket. Well, I have to be running along now, Miss Enright. Hope you have a nice time over the weekend. Oh, I'm sure we'll all have a nice time. You and Mr. Boynton and myself. I'm sure we will, Miss Enright. Goodbye. I wonder where she got this ticket. Hiya, Miss Enright. Well, I got all the equipment and stuff, and I... It, uh, where did Miss Brooks go? I wanted to cheer her up a little. Cheer her up? Yeah. She seemed kind of blue because Mr. Boynton isn't going to the game tomorrow. Mr. Boynton is... So that's why she sold me the ticket. Walter, could I borrow one of those pennants you've got there? Oh, sure, Miss Enright. Uh, what kind do you want? Any kind, just so it's nice and sharp. <laughs> Uh, it's me again, Mr. Boynton. There's something I'd oh, like to Oh, I'm glad you came back, Miss Brooks. I've been thinking this over very carefully, and... <laughs> I've, I've decided that I've just got to go en route for our team tomorrow. <laughs> now, those kids would never forgive me if I didn't come. Mr. B Mr. LeBlanc will just have to understand. You don't mean it, Mr. Boynton. You can't mean that you're going to ride 80 miles in a drafty old... <laughs> buck a germ-ridden mob for the privilege of watching 22 untalented children run into each other while you're sitting on a stone bench with your feet in your pocket. No, no. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. You can't talk me out of it this time. I'm going to the ball tomorrow or bust. Oh, but Mr. Boynton... May I come in, Mr. Boynton? It's Miss Enright. Stay right where you are, Miss Enright. I'll come out. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. Well, what is all this? Miss Brooks, I... Miss Brooks. I thought I'd find you here. I know what you're thinking, Miss Enright, and you're perfectly justified in being annoyed with me, but I'd like to make it up to you if you'll let me. What do you mean, Miss Brooks? Here's your five dollars back. Give me the ticket. Well, I didn't expect you to be this honest. Here you are, Miss Brooks. Thank you. Oh, hello, Miss Enright. Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. I um, understand you're going to be in town over the weekend. How about taking in a movie together tomorrow night? Oh, I'm afraid that's out of the question, Miss Enright. I'm going to Clay City tomorrow with the team. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, you've done it again. That's two touchdowns for you already. Don't add up the score yet. I'm hoping to make some conversions tomorrow. <laughs> as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives Kay Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crown.
crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Saturday morning, as per Mr. Conklin's schedules, I boarded the 7.30 bus with the cheerleaders in the band. We arrived at the Clay City Hotel about half an hour before game time. Isn't this a swell room, Miss Brooks? Oh, it's very nice, Harriet. This is where we're going to change our clothes for the dance tonight. The band has a suite right down the hall. I'll get it. Hello, Miss Brooks speaking. Hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Conklin. All set up in your room? Yes, and it's very comfortable, Mr. Conklin. How is your room? Splendid, thank you. But that's not what I'm calling about. I had Walter Denton deliver Schedule C to you yesterday, Miss Brooks. Uh, did you read it? Oh, that wasn't necessary, Mr. Conklin. I remembered word for word the instructions you outlined in Schedules A and B. Uh, never mind A and B, Miss Brooks. Do you happen to have Schedule C handy? Yes, sir. It's right here in my purse. Uh, then open it up and read it to me. I'll hang on. Yes, sir. <laughs> here it is. It says... Schedule C. At 7.30 a.m., band members and cheerleaders will leave on bus number one. Due to the fact that I have procured a much larger bus than was previously planned, bus number two has been canceled. Read on, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Therefore, chaperone will delay departure of the bus until 8 a.m. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, if the second bus was canceled, what transportation did you have? None, Miss Brooks. <laughs> but, but, but you said you had a nice room. Oh, I have a lovely room. <laughs> You've seen it. Done in early American. Lots of nice maple and some fine old prints. There's only one thing I don't like about it, Miss Brooks. What's that, Mr. Conklin? It's in my home. <laughs> Eighty miles from Clay City. Oh, this is terrible. I, I don't know what to say, Mr. Conklin. Why, I'm responsible for you being left all alone. Oh, but I'm not alone, Miss Brooks. You're not? No, no. No, there are 25 of us here. <laughs> the entire Madison football team! <laughs> Now then, Miss Brooks, with the game due to commence in half an hour, who is going to take the field against Clay City? The Madison Band, Mr. Conklin. The band? You're going to have the band play football? No, sir, mule train. That's one way we'll be sure to whip them. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the palm olive lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try palm olive lather shaving cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the palm olive lather shaving cream way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.